taken over my life. And yeah. Sure. yeah. I'll never be the same. That's is there anything that happened in that in that process that was changed by other forces that you would change back? Were, were there were there certain network decisions or studio decisions or things like that that affected the final product in a manner that, that to this day I, stick with you, or you were able to, to push it through? I was very lucky in that um, I'm from San Francisco. My studio is in San Francisco. We're a long way from Hollywood. I made the movies in England. I tried to stay as far away from those guys as possible. When I, when I did American Graffiti, it was, you know, a disaster. They didn't even count it as a movie. It was like a, they were, they didn't even, they were trying to decide whether they were going to release it as a TV movie or not, because they didn't think it was that good. So they, when they finally got a hold of the saw it, they didn't see anything. But at the very end, they said, oh, we got to change it. And they, cut five minutes out, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know. Uh, and uh, made me very angry, but then it became a giant hit. Then I wrote on the coattails of American Graffiti and was fortunate to find uh, a studio executive, uh, Alan Ladd Jr., that said, look, um, you got another project? And I said, well, I got this sort of space opera thing. It's not, you know, it's really goofy. And so he read the script and he said, look, I, I don't understand what you're doing. But I think you're a talented guy, and I'll invest in you. But and then he had to sort of keep selling it to the studio's board of directors and stuff for like two years because they really didn't. You know, they weren't quite as uh, open to new right. ideas as. Uh, but he Lionel. championed you all the way through. Championed me all the way through. The only thing I didn't get to do is obviously we ran out of money. We went over schedule. Uh, I couldn't do the job of the hut scene. I couldn't do some of the special effects. I couldn't do so. I had to bring my vision down quite a bit. And um, but being persistent and stubborn in the way I am, you know, when Star Wars became a huge success, I went back. Warner Brothers had recut my first film, THX, and I forced them to put it back the way it was. <laughs> then I went to Universal and I forced them to put my graffiti back the way it was. This was before VHS, by the way. And so when VHS came out, it came out with my version, and then eventually I had enough money and time and energy to do it to Star Wars and to all of our I remember that. that was, I believe that's what was called Revenge of the Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wow. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> all right, here's from Dave from San Francisco, the hometown. This one is, is sort of a more of a logic question. Uh, Luke Skywalker. We're trying to keep him hidden, obviously, from, from Darth Vader, whose last name is also Skywalker. <laughs> when Vader saw on CNN <laughs> that it was Luke Skywalker who had blown up the Death Star, do you think he would have thought, boy, that name sounds familiar. Or do you think, <laughs> was there any thoughts of maybe making it Luke Ginsburg? Any <laughs> kind of alias that, that would have helped keep him somewhat Stuart, maybe? <laughs> well, there is a logic to that, believe it or not. Which is, uh, one, there are a lot of Skywalkers. Right. You know, you sort of look at it because there's one Skywalker in the universe. No, you should see the phone book. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's, you know, there's, there's even a Skywalker wine. Oh, really? <laughs> so, so, so uh, that and the other part, which is the one place that is the most painful for Anakin Skywalker is Tatooine. Because that's where he grew up. That's where he lost his mother. The, the, the core of his sense of loss is on that planet. So, you know, it's called denial. You know, it's, it's, uh, there's a planet called denial, too. It's not just a place in Egypt. And that's the planet of Tatooine for Darth Vader. Now, uh, you will notice also that um, the Emperor has long suspected that there are children. You gotta remember in the beginning, they don't even know that, Vader doesn't know that there are children at all, really. Right. 
uh, you know, because he well, killed he Padme's he, dawn and yeah, he children. killed Padme. He didn't know that the babies actually existed. You know, they died too. And so, as far as I can there is no, you know, and the, as I say, so that when he he just put that out of his mind. But the emperor knew that there was a possibility because he's told a lie that said you killed her. Right. But he actually didn't. But so he's the one, that, and he knew that she was pregnant and that there was this possibility that these kids may still be alive. When they, when Luke blows up the Death Star and you come back and this movie we're celebrating now for 30 years, uh, he said, he said, the first thing he said is, is, Skywalker is alive. There is another Skywalker. Your son lives. And that's like the first time that Vader really finds out that he does have a son, his son lives, but the Emperor kind of knew it, and he was just waiting for something to get the sense of the ripple in the forest to sense, aha! You know? And, and, and Vader did he kinda, have to be old enough to create a ripple in the force? Was he not able to, when he was no. younger, did it not create the kind of ripple? Well, when he was younger, he wasn't even, um, he, was, he was just a I was just, little kid. Just shooting womp rats down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Womp rats. Yeah. Yeah. Womp rats. By the way, after somebody figured out that their names were both Skywalker, or did that? Because <laughs> how do you, I mean, it is, it's, it's so interesting when you create, you know, so much of what you do seems to be influenced by mythology and, and sort of these, these grand tales of morality throughout the past. And it's so intricate that well, to create these universes, it's very difficult. It's, it's, it, there's a whole story behind all that. Which is in the beginning, I did do a movie. It was supposed to be one movie. It was sort of the tragedy of Darth Vader, right. which is or the tragedy of Anakin Skywalker. But it started out with this monstrous guy. Uh, it started out in episode four. So you were in a, like a Republic serial or a Saturday Night Matinee serial or an episode of 24, and you missed the first episode. <laughs> you come in and this big monster guy comes in and kills everybody and all this sort of stuff. And then halfway through the movie, you, you realize, or he realizes, that his main opponent is his son. And then, in the end, his son redeems him. But the movie was way too big, so I couldn't do that. So I did one movie, which is the first act. Right. And then as I put it out, you know, every, once every three years, Darth Vader was such a more powerful figure than I ever imagined him to be. He sort of overwhelmed the movie, and then the question is, is he a human, is he not a human? Before you heard that all in one sentence, now you broke it up. So you jump to conclusions, you know, sort of like an edited videotape, where you sort of think one thing, but the truth right. is, if you see the whole thing, it's something else. That's what happened. But in order to tell that story, episode four, I had to write the backstory, which was not meant to be a movie. It was just meant to say, well, who is Darth Vader? Where did he come from? Uh, where, where is the Empire? Where is the Republic? Who are all these people? Uh, so I had to put all that stuff out there in order to get to the end. But because it got so spread out, it got very uh, diffused. So the story was kind of half directing me and I was half directing the story in terms of how much I uh, had to do it. And, and because the backstory was not filmable, just technologically, you couldn't shoot Coruscant and Yoda couldn't, I barely got Yoda. The big technological breakthrough in Empire Strikes Back was the fact that we got a Muppet to look real enough for people to believe it was a real thing, not just a sock. <laughs> uh, but obviously he couldn't walk, you know, more than that far, and he could never show his feet, and you know, there was just all these things you could, he obviously couldn't sword fight, and I knew in the beginning he was a Jedi master and he, would, he fought. But I couldn't show that because how can I do that with a puppet? So it wasn't until actually digital technology came over right. into my reality that I said, you know, I could tell the, the real tragedy of Arthur, start with him as a little kid and follow it all the way through so you could see the whole story. Because it's, I wrote it already, it's done. And of course, that's where having my own company, doing it myself, really did pay off 